political commentator Jimmy Dore had this to say on Tucker Carlson's Fox News show yesterday. We're the ones provoking this war, just like we provoked the war in Ukraine. We are now provoking a war with China. And what? who, who benefits? I'll tell you right now. Your enemy is not China. Your enemy is not Russia. Your enemy is the military industrial complex, which has been fleecing this country to the tunes of hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars. How many times are we going to have a defense secretary say, hey, we can't account for two trillion dollars in the Pentagon again, That like, which has happened twice now in my life. Lifetime. So again, people are being, uh, uh, the, the war machine cannot be stopped. Who's running this country? The war machine. It certainly isn't Joe Biden making these decisions. Head of the Conservative Heritage Foundation, Kevin Roberts, tweeted, Congress needs to put away its kid gloves and put the Department of Defense and other agencies alike under the knife to excise wasteful spending. It is a top priority to save our nation. A growing number of Americans believe the U.S. is giving too much support to Ukraine. According to The Hill, 26 percent of Americans think the United States' support of Ukraine is too strong, a new Pew Research Center poll finds. So a number of interesting things here. You have Jimmy Dore, uh, a YouTuber, I think, formally considered in good standing on the left. Uh, I, think he's but, a, I think he's a leftist and still identifies as a leftist. He supports well, Medicare for all and wealth taxes and all of the things. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like uh, a lot of other people, People who, who were for Bernie, who were on the left, are really frustrated about how much uh, uh, approval of the, deep, the national security state, the deep state, there seems to be in Democratic circles going on Tucker, who's like-minded on this issue and pr probably many other, several other things Jimmy Dore agrees with, to talk about how uh, the, the, the blob always wants foreign policy intervention, is all for this Ukraine uh, exercise when the American people aren't necessarily there. I don't think conservative voters are there. You see that in the poll data. You see that in, and I'm, I'm glad to see, I, I, when we talked about your radar today, you talked about spending, and I said, look, can some conservatives ha are coming around on this, or, or, or if they were always around, they're being more vocal about it, including Kevin Roberts, who is president of the Heritage Foundation, which is the conservative think tank. Uh, it's had, I think, a little bit of an ideological evolution under his tenure mm. to being uh, much less hawkish. Um, in fact, I think they parted ways with some of their national security mm. experts at the think tank because they were very, very for Ukraine at all costs. Uh, Kevin Roberts feels differently or, or knows that what conservative-minded voters and supporters want is a different policy. And yes, defense spending obviously has to be on the table. You sound like a hypocrite right. if you rail against government spending, but you're like, oh yeah, another couple billion, a trillion for, for nation building elsewhere. Yeah. Nobody buys that. And That's not persuasive. And Jimmy's right about uh, the Pentagon keep miss, missing money. Like he can't come up with the funds, can't track its own funds. It's failed the last five audits it's experienced. I don't know what other mm -hmm. government agency would have such poor financial mismanagement dealing with such huge sums of money and not come under scrutiny by Republicans who Sina Quinan is focusing on wasteful spending like that. The Pentagon so, routinely loses money. It's spent in Afghanistan and Iraq that it can't account for. Weapons can't be accounted for. Nobody knows what they're doing. Absolutely. So it, it, I, I will say about Tucker Carlson, my understanding is that there's a little bit of a mixed bag on his China hawkishness as compared to his Ukraine hawkishness. And there's a number of guests who regularly really seem to be beating the drums of war for engagement with China who... Uh, part of kind of the, the broader Fox News universe. But there was a lot more ideological diversity, especially in this area, on Fox News. And it is very mm -hmm. nice, frankly, to see that Jimmy Dore is able to go on and make the kind of argument that he would rarely be offered the opportunity to make on MSNBC or CNN. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine to, to criticize China. I think it's fine to criticize Russia, too, to be upset with the policies of the government. I'm very upset with the policies of uh, the Chinese government with respect to our own companies here, which, which can't which when they want to operate in China, have to do self-censorship to appease the, the communist authoritarians of China. I hate their lockdown policies and everything else, but you're right, that doesn't mean we go to war with them. That doesn't mean we, we are, our government should, should uh, have this rhetoric that brings us closer to the brink of war with them. So I, I agree with Jimmy Dore, you know, refocusing, you know, we're, as American citizens, what can we do? And we should exercise our power as voters, as constituents, to be upset with the war machine. I agree with that. Yeah, it is frustrating also. I mean, Jimmy Dore gets a lot of criticism from folks who say, 
one, that evident, that going on conservative shows is evidence somehow of his conservative allegiances, even though obviously Julianne Reed is not extending uh, Jimmy Dore invitations to come on her show, just as an example. Um, and moreover, they make this argument that when he points out that they're as, 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 as limited as the energy is on the right for this kind of thing, as you've pointed out, there is more energy, at least from people in power and elected officials, on the right than there is on the left. And that is not a compliment to the right. It's an indictment of the left, a community to which Jimmy Dore belongs, and a warning that if there is not more of more representation of this worldview, as we saw from the polls, this is a very common plural, plurality uh, kind of worldview in the United States. If there's not more representation of that view on the left, you are going to get people moving right because of this issue in, in particular. Yeah. I mean, let's say your main issue, obviously you can care about multiple things, but let's say your main issue is foreign policy, is being against support for war, is you know br bring the troops home, non-interventionist, against drones, that kind of mindset. Let's say that's your main issue. And that's fair to be your main issue because that's, that's one of the most significant things our government does is, is, uh, is kill people, right? Is involves, is, is make decisions about which governments we should be working with, which we should be trying to overthrow. These are consequential decisions. These are where the president has the most power, frankly. The, the, the president is least constrained in matters of foreign policy by Congress. Congress has rubber stamped the, 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 the executive administration's behavior on foreign policy mm -hmm. is very unconstrained. So it is right to be primarily concerned about foreign policy. If that is your primary concern and you're, you're what would have previously been considered like a hardcore leftist person on that, which party do you belong in right now? You can make a case that the party you belong in is the Republican well, Party. Well, I mean, I think it's complicated because— Or as because you said, not the Democratic not, Party. The, I think it's complicated because, the one, again, it's a very limited perspective even within the Republican Party. It's not that Republican leadership, um, with the exception of some folks, you know, maybe Kevin McCarthy, are talking yeah. about— we have to withdraw from Ukraine. We're not going to write a blank check to Ukraine. So also you have to tease out what is kind of political posturing and what commitments are actually likely to be made uh, by Congress. But the other issue is that it's not just a foreign policy issue. I think part of what's animating the frustration here is that things are going so poorly domestically. So it's people who are frustrated, not just that so much spending is going out the door to other countries, but that there is not the same appetite for spending at home, which is footing that conservatives are on less healthy ground on, because to the extent that some of them will say, OK, we shouldn't spend on Ukraine, they're also not saying we need to use those resources to help Americans be able to uh, afford gas, afford eggs, and the like. Moreover, for many people on the left, I would say that foreign policy is increasingly a defining issue. Many people look at Bernie Sanders being relatively weak in that area as compared to his um, domestic policy as kind of a warning bell of his unwillingness to fight and being as quite as antagonistic to the establishment as people wanted him to be at the end of his 2020 race. And when there are criticized, where they're looking at prospective other left candidates this time around, like Marianne Williamson, it is her foreign policy positions that have caused the most anxiety and conflict and uh, pushback among certain parts of the left um, because of her, you know, statements on Israel, for example, and uh, not being as strong as many as many leftists would alike. It's also worth noting um, with respect to Israel that, you know, Anthony Blinken, Blinken um, is uh, is just vis visited with Netanyahu. And while he made some statements that were critical of the settlements, he affirmed his commitment, the United States' commitment to Israel over and over and over again. And that, again, is a real sticking point of an issue for leftists and people who are concerned with this issue. So America says, what's the justification for being in Ukraine? A country can't avoid, uh, invade another country's borders. This is a line in the sand. We're always going to get involved. Well, the hypocrisy then becomes in incredibly acute when you're looking at Israel, who is engaging those same kind of behaviors uh, as as Russia invading, you know, and and, and can, can keeping Palestinians in this open air prison, as it's been described by so many authorities in this in this matter, and, and including um, Israeli politicians. And why? What justifies America's relationship with Israel on one hand, and its um, proxy war with Russia on the other hand? Mm. Yeah, and and what uh, and, and what you what do you have to do to get an actual you know anti war democratic political figure when they run they run, Barack Obama ran on the mistakes calling out mistakes mm -hmm. that were being made in Iraq and Afghanistan and then governed completely differently than that then put Hillary Clinton in charge of his foreign policy 
and you saw the results. What, what we got was uh, intervention in Libya, yeah. which was consistent with her philosophy. But th the seduction of being of being not anti-war, of being yeah. pro-war when you actually get into office is something uh, many Democrats have not been able to overcome, M I many agree. Republicans as well, I, but I many agree. of them didn't make the same commitments. I mean, Obama is the perfect example of why I am skeptical of people who are saying the right things um, on the right right now. Because yeah. uh, when you are disempowered, if you are even speaker of a, a house, when you don't control the other prongs of government, you can say a lot of things knowing that nothing's going to manifest. So it's not to say that I... I don't want to give credit where credit's due, but it's measured credit because we've been here before, and I have been close enough to the disappointment of Barack Obama not to put blind faith in someone like The tenor like of both political parties on these issues does ma not match what the American people yeah. want. The, the blob is bipartisan. Yeah. yeah. More rising right after this. Stay tuned.